Should Rockstar make more horror games? I'm Mark from Digital Dissection, and while I personally suck at survival horror, today I'm here to break down why Rockstar games might be better at the genre than you would think. Rockstar games should require no introduction. The New York City-based video game publisher is responsible for series like Grand Theft Auto, Red Dead, and Max Payne. Uh, you know, indie games that kind of have a cult following. While Rockstar knows how to basically print its own money with several successful series under their belt, there's something that the studio has seemingly always gotten right, and you may not actually know them for it. For some reason, Rockstar seems to have a grip on horror elements across all of its games, even if these games don't use them as a primary storytelling device. In recent memory, the Grand Theft Auto franchise seems to have disturbing content meant to catch players off guard. But when Grand Theft Auto 3 arrived originally, breadcrumbs of gameplay that made gamers feel uneasy began to slowly arrive. One of the earliest examples could be the Harbor Tunnel of Grand Theft Auto 3. While exploring Liberty City, you can travel down a tunnel near 8 Ball's shop for a story mission. And within it, you'll find homeless men standing around each other holding Molotov cocktails. In 2001, the site was, well, at minimum a bit strange, but it opened up dialogue about larger conversations within the GTA universe. Basically, sometimes there are things that occur that just don't make sense, and of course, cause us to ask questions, feel creeped out, and start looking for answers. In this case, it didn't really lead anywhere, as there isn't a larger narrative for this area to fit into. It's just an odd spot early in the franchise's history. Concepts like this, though, would expand and further creep out gamers, as GTA 3's spin-off, Vice City, would feature a very violent reference to Apartment 3C, the location of a specific chainsaw sequence in the movie Scarface. The movie would go on to influence quite a bit about the game's premise. It was still quite unnerving, though, to discover how if you had no knowledge of the film, it's jarring at minimum if you're casually exploring. And no, we won't be showing you the clip from the movie here. However, these small pieces of Grand Theft Auto's 3D history serve as footnotes on the way to much bigger possibilities. Creepy references would continue in San Andreas, as the back of Beyond Woods served as a very unnerving location, featuring ghost cars that would appear in this setting. And even though it was an oversight design glitch that allowed them to show up, this area became an unfounded setting for rumors and Bigfoot myths, even though they would end up being false. What was even darker, however, was El Castillo del Diablo, an area located between Area 69 and Las Brujas, a ghost town that could have possibly been used to perform government experiments. Seriously, there's a mass grave. Don't go to El Castillo del Diablo. Even at this point, however, Grand Theft Auto as a franchise really only insinuated things that could be unsettling within its universe. Within the entries of GTA 4 and 5, however, these concepts really had no choice but to be blunt instruments. GTA 4 definitely made sure that several of its locations could creep out gamers, as a redesign of GTA 3's setting meant that they could adjust some of the areas explored in the 2001 title. And this took form in the area of the abandoned Sprunk Factory, the Colony Island Hospital, and the literal house at the center of the Amityville Horror. While each location is uniquely creepy in their designs, it's rumored you can hear screams and indecipherable language if you listen closely while visiting. GTA 4 and 5 also bring about references to serial killers, and while 4 features an NPC named Edward Lowe, who is suspected in many murders, GTA 5 introduces the Infinity Killer, named Merle Abrahams, who leaves behind a series of clues explaining all of his misdeeds, a side quest that's twisted just as much as it is interesting. One of GTA 5's most horrific moments, however, is that of Mount Gordo, and a side quest involving Jolene Cranley Evans deceased wife of politician Jock Cranley. She appears at night during the game and references her crumbling relationship with Jock, who pushes her to her death from the peak of Mount Gordo. And for many, this was a mystery that was jarring, as initially after the game's premiere, there wasn't much indicating she'd even appear there. As more became known about Jolene's demise, however, sounds were observed in the area of a woman screaming and fighting for her life. Regardless, these accents within the larger scope of Grand Theft Auto showed that it could be more than just high-stakes open-world crime thriller. But Rockstar has been capable of far more, and has proved it in much more impressive ways. Now at this point we'd like to say that if you are enjoying this exploration of horror in Rockstar produced games, consider subscribing and clicking the bell to be notified of new videos on this channel, where we offer weekly pop culture content and are always dissecting something. Now, let's get back to it. Now, as we mentioned just a few moments ago, there's clearly many disturbing elements of Rockstar Games projects, and many have been found across the world of Grand Theft Auto. 
However, there are some out there who think that the world of Red Dead Redemption is much more creepy in comparison, and we really can't blame them. While elements of horror are strong in later iterations of GTA, within the Red Dead Redemption universe, we immediately find cannibals, crazed swamp people, ghosts, and gruesome random encounters. To make things worse, the ambient music of Red Dead Redemption's first outing is enough to make anyone's neck hair stand up. But throughout much of the game, you're also often on your own, and experiencing some of these jarring events without anyone else around can be horrific, as Red Dead Redemption has its own share of serial killers just like GTA, but you actually experience their crimes firsthand. While Red Dead Redemption 2 revisited many similar elements like ghosts and hyper-violent humans, Red Dead Redemption 1 brought us the Undead Nightmare DLC, which was a non-canon exploration of a zombie outbreak within its universe. What it does exceptionally well, however, is provide a blueprint for why Rockstar should be creating more horror games, as it places players into a truly hopeless backdrop, full of undead attackers, and in a setting that feels built for a survival horror experience to thrive. This is the American West after all, not a futuristic setting packed full of weapons, armor, and unique ways to fight back. This is an imperfect time with limited resources, and navigating its hordes of undead is nerve-wracking, unbalanced at times in terms of confidence, and a story that frankly could have been perfect to explore on its own outside the framework of being a Red Dead add-on. It's really a perfect combination of aesthetics, as the fantastic musical score of the main game is warped to match the setting. Its moon is turned into a sickly green color, and trying to cleanse the world of zombies outside of the modern era carries a thick air of feeling exasperated at every turn. As brilliant as the Red Dead universe is at capturing horror elements, however, there's one big reason why gamers are clamoring for Rockstar to take more chances trying to capture the survival horror market. And it has nothing to do with the highly successful franchises they've become known for. Instead, it's about Manhunt, a series first cultivated by Rockstar in the mid-90s that had two titles in 2003 and 2007. Manhunt is a game not known by many, but one that heavily relies on stealth and quickly became known for its dark tones and hyper-violent execution system. It faced tremendous scrutiny by the video game industry, world politicians, and the ESRB rating system that wanted Manhunt 2 to be registered under an adult-only rating. Manhunt's first game, however, became known quickly for its unique storyline, which tasked a death row inmate with taking out people known as Hunters, as he's being instructed to act as a hitman of sorts for a mysterious adversary called the Director, who promises him his freedom should he succeed. The controversial series featured a rating system based on the entertainment value of the player's decisions, and they could potentially earn up to five stars per area of the game, as it slowly disclosed that the main character is actually providing content for a snuff film. It's not exactly wholesome, but what many may not even know about the game is that it inspired widespread debate amongst the industry. It forced retailers to consider the consequences of such violence in games, and the impact it could have on younger gamers in particular. Social commentary aside, however, it still pales in comparison to some of the violence now experienced in video games. What it still receives praise for even now, however, is that Rockstar had a pivotal understanding of horror in video games. And while this series doesn't involve zombies or the supernatural, it was the decision-making of the player character that is really what makes it so disturbing, and their success is literally based on it. This is but a taste of why the game is banned in many areas around the world and why we'll likely never get a remaster of it anytime soon. The concept is truly too disturbing to make a reasonable case for putting in front of future generations, and that's even considering that this game came out one year before the Saw film series even began. The point, however, is that Rockstar seemingly always had a talent for being able to craft themes across its entire history to show that they've always seen horror in their peripheral vision. There seems to be an appetite for the company to test their fan base with elements of the darkest corners of humanity. And in an era where open-world zombie games are critically popular, like Days Gone and Dying Light as examples, Rockstar could further etch out yet another reputation for itself, even when they've proven just how much money Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead can generate. Just think about it for a minute. If Rockstar can masterfully create horror within games that don't even need it, yet still excel in the genre where it's 100% the focus, what's holding them back from making the greatest open-world horror game ever made? It's a question we hope Rockstar answers one day, but in the meantime, we'll just have to wait to see what they want to do to scare the hell out of us next, in a moment where we probably least expect it.
And as always, thank you for checking out this video as we dissected why Rockstar Games should make more horror experiences. Stay tuned for more original content on this channel, and until next time, pop culture nerds, keep on dissecting.